What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some tips when it comes to switching from AutoCAD to Revit. So uh, when it comes to uh, architecture or the building industry, uh, AutoCAD is uh, one of the most commonly used software uh, uh, so far. So uh, maybe Revit is starting to take over uh, probably at this moment, but uh, AutoCAD for the longest time it was the most used software, and it was and it is actually a really good piece of software. Uh, it's a drafting software. It's used for, for many different professions and of course architecture is one of them. Uh, now, uh, in lately, a lot of people are starting to switch from AutoCAD to Revit, and even students that are starting to learn today, even though they know about Revit, uh, a lot of them tend to start off with AutoCAD, and then uh, later on, at some point, they switch to Revit. So, uh, in today's video, I wanted to share some tips when it comes to making the switch that are just going to make your life a little bit easier. Uh, so the first tip is going to be to take your time and start off small. So when it comes to uh, working in Revit, it can be really complicated and uh, the best way to learn is to, well, uh, never get overwhelmed because at that time you usually are, you're going to lose your uh, kind of your mo motivation and then you're going to give up. So uh, the best approach is to start small and then work your way up, working and adding more complexity to each new project, but start off with a small project. Uh, for this reason, for example, for my beginner to intermediate level course for Revit, I start off with a small project and then I work my way up to a larger project teaching all of you. Now, if you're interested in this 18-hour course on Revit, you can find it on my website, balkanarchitect.com. That's the first link uh, in the description just below the video. So check it out if you're interested. You get a template uh, as well with that course uh, if you get it uh, today. Anyways, let's get back to switching from AutoCAD into Revit. The second tip is to really understand the power of Revit or the power that Revit actually gives you. Because when it comes to working in AutoCAD, you really don't have any information that's embedded inside of all of the elements uh, in your project. Lines are simply lines and the same types of lines are used uh, for walls, for furniture, for plumbing, and so on. In Revit, it's much different, and Revit is a lot more powerful. So you really need to understand what is BIM, or Building Information Modeling, and what is the actual power that Revit gives you so you can actually harness it properly. Sounds like you're Superman or something. That's kind of cool. Next step is to always have an organized workflow. So when it comes to working in Revit, workflow is really important. It's really important to know what to do at, uh, at which point. And it's also really a, a good idea to plan out your projects. So uh, just plan out what you're going to start off with and uh, just plan out the stages at which you're going to add more and more elements and complexity to your model. Next step is really, really important one, and that is never to undermodel or overmodel. So you want to model an exact amount. So what do I mean when I say this? Well, uh, when it comes to working in Revit, uh, it can be really difficult to model some uh, some parts. For example, stairs are something that uh, students, when they're just getting started, they, they find it really difficult to get stairs to work exactly how they how they want them to to, to work and to look. So uh, they tend to kind of model them in the floor plan using detail lines or something like that, and that is a terrible idea. You don't want to undermodel some elements. You don't want to use uh, 2D elements to re to replace 3D geometry. I think it's a bad idea, and it's going to cost you a lot in the long run. So uh, just make sure not to uh, uh, under model uh, when it comes to creating elements. But also for your projects, make sure not to over model. So uh, if your project requires you to have a roof. That can be a simple roof. You don't have to go in and model each individual rafter and construction element for that roof if that's something that's not really required for your project. Uh, when it comes to working in Revit, I think uh, it can be a, a really fun and then people kind of get carried away and they over model, uh, which can be a waste of time. It can be really useful in some cases because you're going to learn something that you haven't known so far, uh, but in a lot of uh, other cases it can be just a waste of time and money and energy and you don't really want that. 
Next step, and this one is really important as well, and that is when you start working in Revit, stick to Revit. Uh, I, I find people uh, uh, in a lot of cases, especially beginners in, in Revit, they start the project off in Revit, and then some halfway through, they just switch back to AutoCAD. They export everything to AutoCAD, and then they continue working in AutoCAD because it's easier for them, and that is a truly a bad idea. You don't want that. So when you start working in Revit, continue working in Revit, do all of the, uh, the, the details in Revit, create all of the sheets in Revit, all of the schedules, do that in Revit. So everything that can possibly be done in Revit, please do it in Revit. Uh, the whole idea uh, behind this piece of software is that you can complete the whole project all inside of one program. You don't have to have a million different programs to work on a project, you just have a single program, Revit and it can do everything. So uh, if it's possible to complete the project in Revit, please, please try to stick to that. Uh, don't, don't give up halfway through and export to AutoCAD. It's a bad idea uh, and you've wasted a lot of time. Now, once you have finished your first, second, third project, after each of those projects, try to reevaluate your approach to working in Revit. Uh, figure out maybe something that you're doing wrong, something, are you doing something that's not necessary? Are you working uh, or doing something that's inefficient? If you perhaps suspect that there is a faster and quicker or maybe automated solution to some problem, please try to figure out what it is and how can you improve your workflow. Uh, me, myself, as an architect, I try to improve my own workflow when it comes to working in Revit. I try to find automated, uh, quick solutions to problems. Uh, I think it's really important not to do repetitive tasks. If, it can, if they can be avoided, try to avoid them. Finally, once you're getting the hang of it when it comes to working in Revit, try to build a system. Uh, Revit is all about uh, creating your own system, your own templates, your own li family library, fi figuring out which plugins might save you time for certain uh, common projects that you work on and so on. So figure out everything that you need and then create your template, install your plugins, create a family library and so on. Uh, I think this is a really good idea. It saves you so much time in the long run and it's going to make working in Revit a lot easier and enjoyable and it's going to allow you to concentrate on the actual project, not having to worry about some technical things uh, when it comes to setting up uh, Revit projects and so on. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I offer my uh, templates on my website. I have created a, a couple of templates that are designed to kind of save you time uh, when it comes to working in Revit. So everything is kind of ready to go. You just open up the template, you have everything that you need and you can get started working on your own projects without having to bother with all the settings. And if you would like to explore those, those are available on my website, balkanarctic.com. It's going to be a link in the description just below the video if you want to get uh, one of my templates. And that's it. Those are all of my tips when it comes to switching from AutoCAD to Revit. And uh, if you have already went through this path, switching from AutoCAD to Revit, as I have a while back, uh, please tell me in the comment section below what is your experience, what was the most difficult part when it comes to this switch, uh, where did you have most trouble, and uh, what were some mistakes that you made along the way. And also, if you have some additional tips that you thought might, that might be a good addition to uh, these tips that I, uh, that I gave, please tell me in the comments just below the video. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, quick uh, uh, video where I, I wanted to just share my own uh, view and tips for people that are switching from AutoCAD into Revit and I'll be back with my regular Balkan Architect Revit tutorials in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.